to. Sorry. Good afternoon. I now call to order the February 22nd, 2023 meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good evening. Ms. Dominowski? Here. Mr. McMillian? Here. Ms. Han? Here. Ms. Dominowski, there are three members. Thank you. Please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Mr. Hartloff? Here. Mr. Tantlin? Here. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Mr. Hartlove, please review the approved ESSER amendment and ESSER projection. Uh, sure. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen with the, um, I'll start with the projection. And are you, is everyone seeing the, uh, it says Baltimore County Public Schools multi-year ESSER projections? Yes, I am. Good, yes. good. Okay, so, um, and I want to let everyone know that I, there was a, there was a change that was, that was uh, added today. Uh, this, this document was updated. So, um, and I apologize for that. It was my, my fault. I, we loaded an older version. Uh, uh, accidentally, but I can go through the, the the differences between the two documents just so so you know. Um, first thing I'll do is just explain the layout of the of the document so you um, are familiar with it. Um, it's a two page document. Um, the uh, basically we have the name of the federal grant, um, and these are basically the CRF is Corona Virus Relief Funds. There was a tutoring grant, there was a technology grant, and then there's the ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and ESSER 3 grants. Um, so basically what we have is we have the fiscal year, what was spent on that grant in that in that fiscal year or what we're projecting for, um, for FY23 and FY24, it's a mix of Actually, for FY20, 21, and 22, it's actuals. FY23 is a mix of actuals and projections because we're only part of the way through FY23. And FY24 is a projected year. So we start with the the, the tutoring uh, grant. We spent uh, dollars on wages and benefits and instructional materials in FY21. And then we had a little bit in FY22. Um, the technology grant, we spent um, devices and related support and contracted services in 2020, and then uh, additional devices and contracted services in FY21. Um, ESSER, the first ESSER grant, ESSER 1, um, we began working with that in FY20. We uh, uh, used some funding in the uh, food and nutrition uh, nutritional Services Fund. Um, most of the funding was used in FY21 and 22. We used some for non-public uh, equitable services for non-public schools, um, remote instructional salary supplies, materials and equipment, uh, CTE instructional supplies and mater uh, uh, materials, and admin support, student health uh, support services, uh, the benefits that go with any uh, any of the the salaries that we um, paid out, facilities re 
configurations, student health services, that's uh, PPE, and contra contact tracing. Again, most of the funding was spent in 2021, 20, 22, and a little bit in 23, and these are actuals as well, as ESSER 1 has been closed out. ESSER 2 is, um, we're in the process of closing ESSER 2, so it's pretty much spent out at this point. Um, so what you're seeing is actuals in FY22, uh, mostly actuals in FY23 and a few project, projected amounts, but this, this grant is closing this year. Uh, we spent money on uh, um, the extended instructional day, the 15 minutes, including school administrators, accelerated a, a, achievement, the summer virtual, actually we didn't, CEP um, in 23, the fringe benefits that go with the positions, um, indirect costs we charge to uh, ESSER 2, PPE, and then uh, HVAC uh, um, improvements um, in 2023. And then the, then go to the page two, and this is where kind of um, where we uh, still have, we'll have dollars left in FY24. So this is kind of the, the grant that we're spending the most time with at this point. Um, as you can see, we didn't have any spending on um, ESSER 3 in FY20 or FY21. We began spending uh, on um, ESSER 3 in FY22. We're still spending in FY23. Again, this is a mix of actuals and, and projections. And then in 24, this is all projected amounts. Now, the things I wanted to, to point out to you is, is changes. Um, one of the things we've been trying to to allow uh, money for or funding for is the virtual uh, the, the virtual learning program, or in, in this case we call it the virtual academy enrollment. That's that's the VLP. Um, in the projection that we had posted out there, it didn't have um, uh, the six point uh, six million six hundred fifty three thousand dollars loaded. We added that because we we've, we've been able to. Uh, find uh, uh, dollars in other areas uh, to 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 be able to fund to fund that in in uh, the FY 24 uh, year as well as IEP chairs. Uh, we were able to uh, bump that number up as well. Other than that, this is is similar to what was loaded out prior um, and you can go. We'll go through each of the items that 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 we're funding. Um, compensatory services for contracted services. Uh, compensatory special ed services, stipends, and support staff. Uh, um, Twelve-month IEP chairs for elementary schools. The virtual program, as we as we as I we were talking about uh, a moment ago. Um, this is more of the virtual uh, program. This uh, um, th this is uh, the uh, elementary and secondary uh, uh, supplies for students and teachers. Um, this up here is the staffing, um, as well as the fringe benefits. Uh, the ex the extended day, extended extended uh, instructional day. That's the 15 minutes. Uh, counselors, social workers, nurses, and and health assistants. PPE, contact tracing, vaccine promotion stipends for nurses. Uh, teachers to reduce classroom size in uh, FY22, HVAC uh, uh, contracted services and supplies, the fringe benefits that go with um, all the positions that we've funded, uh, retention bonuses uh, uh, that we've that we've paid in uh, in 22 and 23, the um, uh, the security assistance, that's the 149 contracted uh, uh, safety assistance. Uh, health wellness, LFTE, general ed uh, special educators, uh, some HR, a uh, small amount of HR staffing, a mobile unit for our um, uh, COP uh, program. Um, the uh, birth to five FTE. Uh, we're, pro uh, we're projecting those in FY24. Uh, uh, magnet program support, um, supplies, different differentiated staff FTEs, self-contained and general ed uh, models of support FTEs, e-learning expansion FTEs, um, 
the uh, let me go back to differentiated staff FTEs there for high school uh, high need schools. The um, this item here is actually substitute hourly wage increase. It's a, a $4 uh, per hour increase. Um, the uh, next item is a contract contractual employee add on pay is also a $4 add on for uh, kindergarten, pre kindergarten, lunchroom assistance. Um, school safety enhancements, these are window and door upgrades. Chatsworth Elementary School uh, FTEs and um, curriculum and instruction student literacy program uh, dollars. So that's the ESSER uh, three uh, actuals and projections. If you look at uh, if you look at the totals for ESSER three, um, they are um, forty four million, eighty four million, and then we project eighty eight million in in FY twenty four. If you if you look at the grand total of spending through all the federal uh, programs that we've had, um, we've we've ramped up spending in 20 to 21, 22 and 23. We're at our peak. Uh, we're also uh, and then in 24. We're starting to uh, um, um, go down. We're, go we're going down in the number of FTEs um, that we're, we're uh, supporting. 530 to 405 down to 311 and then in the dollars that we're spending in total. So we're kind of looking at the federal funding cliff and we're looking at the at, at reducing um, and, and fully spending all of the funds. Um, and as you can see, we're projecting a four year total of 362, almost $363 million that we will have spent um, when we get through the end of uh, next year. Um, that's the projection. Um, any questions? Any questions on the on the projection? Because before uh, I once we get through this, then I'll go through the the uh, budget um, narrative uh, that we have loaded out as well. I think Ms. Han had a question. Sure, sure. I had a couple. Thank you, Ms. Domanowski. Good afternoon. Good evening, Mr. Hartlow. Good evening. Thank you for preparing this. This is extremely helpful. Um, so I really appreciate that. First of all, um, I had a couple questions as we went through and stop me if you're going to be covering it in the um, budget overview. Um, my first is in FY 2020, the line item for food and nutrition services of I believe it was four and a half million roughly. Do you have any detail on that? I'm curious since that would have only been for a few months and we didn't begin food service. Um, after the pandemic immediately, um, how we incurred those expenses in FY 2020? If yes, and and the answer to that is um, when we first got into the pandemic in the early uh, days of the pandemic, um, we weren't serving um, students at all, and we yet we still had staff. Um, uh, to pay for because the big thing with with the the kind of the push behind these funding these funds were trying to also try to keep people employed during the kind of the the emergency part of the pandemic. So uh, these folks, because the because the uh, uh, food service fund is a self supporting fund, if we don't have dollars coming in, we don't have dollars to pay the salaries. So this was basically to prop the program up and continue to keep these folks employed with their benefits while we weren't serving any lunches. And then eventually, as it ramped up, it was um, we still weren't until it, it really wasn't until we brought students back fully that we got back to our full you know participation. Of, of students, so really that's what these dollars are for. It was for, it was to uh, keep the program running, keep the employees employed uh, while we weren't while we weren't uh, operating. I see. Thank you. And my second question, and this you may be getting to, is for the virtual academy. Yes. Um, yeah. You mentioned finding um, some dollars. The six million was referenced. Right. That right. is to continue um, the virtual academy at using the lottery that was proposed or is that at the current enrollment? That is that is the lottery uh, uh, okay, option. Model. You, you got it. You, this is got what it. was uh, what was discussed uh, the other night. OK, that's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm. Thank you. 
Um, I just had one question from the the first budget meeting we had where we went over some of um, some of the funds that are being spent and how uh, funds are moved from the ESSER fund into general fund where like um, where is I know one of them was the um, what that one after school program that was uh, the little boys club or the I might be saying it wrong um, but where is that on this list? Of. Um, I I'm not familiar with that particular item, but if we moved it off of Esser, then it wouldn't. It would only. This is only showing what we've actually either actually spent or are planning to spend. So if for some reason we may have been planning to spend something, and then later we determined to move it someplace, and then mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't show up here because we actually never spent any any dollars on it. So the only things that are showing here are things that we either have spent already or are planning to spend. Would it be possible to have moved anything from this fund into a general fund and us like it, it not be marked down under under this? Well, the way this yeah, and, and, and it's possible if you're saying like when we first got these dollars, we were it was kind of uh, it was obviously we were in a bad position because we were in the middle of a pandemic, but we were, you know, we were obviously happy to get the dollars and we very quickly had to come up with plans on how to use the funding. Um, so some of those, and and this was unprecedented, uh, this was an unprecedented situation. So, you know, we we had to do a lot of, of quick planning to say, okay, here we'll, we'll use funds for this, we'll use funds for this, and we, we came up with our plan. As we move forward, some of the items that we initially thought we may do, we may have said, you know what, that maybe is not a, is, is good of an idea as we thought, or maybe the general fund is a better place to pay for it. Or one of the things that we ran into is, is we had some ideas for things and then we couldn't find the staff uh, to, 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 you know, just staff those programs. So we ended up not doing them could because we couldn't staff them. So in those cases, we may they, you, they may have been included on a plan at one point, but then for whatever reason, due to either lack of interest, um, lack of being able to hire uh, somebody or something else that we, um, you know, that a, a better idea that kind of surfaced later on as we went through, uh, maybe replace that idea. So if it's not showing one here, it may have been part of a plan at one point, but then we may have, before we actually spent the dollars, we may have changed our, our plan. Every time we change our plan, we have to go to MSDE with an amendment and let them know, you know how we're changing our plan and then they approve it. Okay, I, I'll, I'll finish with this. Um, I just remember you saying that sometimes it was easier to move money from a grant fund into the general fund because you have to do specifications and and you write certain things and you you would get back to that later. I just want to make sure that you're saying that um, all the money that was spent from this grant, from this ESSER grant is accounted for and it didn't get moved somewhere else and then get spent and not not accounted for on this list. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that makes sense. And that did the only time you have anything even close to that is what Ms. Hen was just talking about a minute ago is that's the food service. Um, that's the only time where you could move money. All the rest of this, the money, you know, it, 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 all the rest of these funds were spent um, uh, within the grant, you know, and there's no, you know, well, nothing was spent outside of what you're seeing on this, on this sheet. And in the example of food service, you're seeing that you know, the, the dollars ended up going to the food service fund, but we're accounting for them here. So this is the total that was moved to the food service fund and then used to pay food service employees. If we ha that's the only example that I can think of with something like that. Um, um, but even in those cases, it shows up here as an expenditure. So th this accounts for every every actual and planned expenditure that we have. OK, Ms. Lister, you had a question. Yeah, I have a couple questions. So, Ms. Domenesi, just cut me off when it's too many, okay? <laughs> so, and I'm trying to look at the new one that, that you just presented. I kind of studied at the other one. So, I'm sorry for, about that. that. That's fine. Just if I'm stuttering through it, that's why. So, for the virtual learning program for FY 2023, there were 164 FTEs, and then for 12, a little over 12 million, and now it's reduced to 40 for half the price. So. What am I missing? Because it, it 
if we were able to have 164 FTEs for 12 million, why now only 40 for 6 million? And and I think, and that's a good question. Uh, what I think what's going on here is it's a bit of a it's it's a bit of a combination here. Uh, I think the 164 is what we had planned on 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 uh, the FTE we planned on, and then the 12 the 12. Uh, 0.3 million is actually the, the actual spending. So uh, I um, I believe that the um, we don't have 164 uh, teachers. It would be my it would be my um, informed guess is that it's it's the 12.3 million is an is an actual figure, and it's probably not not funding fully 164 FTE. So I understand how you could say, you know, the the, the math doesn't add up. I the, the numbers, the dollar numbers are correct. The FTE, I think that was what we had hoped that we would thought, you know, maybe in a in a, a best case or, uh, you know, highest enrollment case, we would need 164.5. We didn't need that many, um, so that's not an actual number. That's a that was kind of what we had budgeted for. The twelve point three is a more accurate actual slash. It's a, a probably a little bit of a projection for the rest of this year, but um, it's a it's a it's more of an actual number. You just double check that for us, just because it. I can do, I can do that. Yes. Okay, something's just not adding up there. Um, I, will, and, I, I right. definitely will get you a good uh, reconciliation between the two numbers. You know, my, my concern with Esther and the reason that I had asked for the chart is the number of FTEs that have been added on here that we will now need a sustainability plan for the following school year because this is definitely ending this year. And I can't find like a rhyme or reason for why so many of these things have been added. For instance, the HVAC. Why is HVAC, which is 11 million for FY24, on this grant? What, what, how is, how did that land on here? It's one of the allowable um, HVAC, uh, any kind of modifications to a building that that help with air handling is one of the allowable um, expenses, and um, those are things that you know. It, it's an opportunity. In, in that case, it's an opportunity to utilize the dollars, and it doesn't impact the cliff because we can. You know, once we we make those modifications, um, we don't have to make those modifications in future years. It's not like a a person that we hire. It's you know. So so that's why we chose to use the dollars for some of the HVAC improvements. Okay, so but so if we didn't have ESSER, those improvements wouldn't be made, or they would have been put onto a different funding source. Um, they, I think they would have been competing. You know, we we would have had that we would have had less funding, so something would have had to have given had to have given. These were things that we wanted to do, and then and and I do believe that I'm not an expert on an engineer on engineering, but I do believe that there were some things that because of the pandemic we wanted to do um regarding air handling so i think some of the things were actually new that we wanted to do um related to the to the um pandemic and and the concerns about you know the air and how clean the air was is. It, it, right it looks like the vlp reduction went you know went right there like that would have given us the funds to, to continue it one more year, but that's just commentary. The other question is there's a lot, there's several special education pieces on ESSER. I thought that special education is usually budgeted through the, the special education funds. So you're able to actually put things on here for the Department of Special Ed. We are, and the big thing here is the compensatory services. You know, that the, the, even though the pandemic was going on and the students weren't getting instruction, um, to the extent that they, you know, their IEPs uh, um, required, that kind of built up, and the, the 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 thought was you have to make up that that lost time. Now we've also found out that not everyone, uh, you know, you, you can only make up that time in the evenings and on the weekends and over the summer. It can't be during the regular school day because that's their, you know, that's their current 
education. So these compensatory services make up services are over and above the regular services that we provide. Right, but they're not continuing for 2024, but now we have general ed, special educators, we have birth through five on here, we have um, self-contained and I mean, so there's other FTEs that have been added on here for special education. Um, right. So that, that I was just, it was interesting to find that on here. HR staff for COVID support, are we still needing COVID support? Um, my understanding is yes. Um, but I, we can certainly get you the details of what those folks are 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 doing. But yes, we 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 still are requiring um, and, okay. that. Yes. And two FTEs for five hundred and four thousand. So there, there's more. Yeah, I think there's more to it than that. Um, okay. And we can get you the detail on that as well. Um, and then differentiated staff FTEs. What does differentiated staff FTEs mean? They are uh, staff for high um, for high need schools. Um, so we were, you know, some of the high need schools. We we um, in order to help with recovery, we we added uh, additional staff uh, to those schools. Okay. Um, contractual employee add on pay. Can you explain what that is? That's a four dollar per hour um, add on for, um, okay. um, for kindergarten assistance, pre K, and so on. Okay. Okay. Um, and is there so when all of these extra additional FTEs are on here, is there any thought about a plan for what's going to happen next year this time when we're we don't have ESSER and we're putting together a budget? That is a very very good question, and we 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 talk about this, you know quite a bit um, and we um, there's two parts of this part number one is is we have these federal dollars and we we want to spend them in the best manner we can so you you got that we don't want to leave dollars on the table um, so right now we're, we're we're spending them the best way we can spend them but then the the, the flip side of that is is that um, they're going to go away and you're right uh, uh you you have to plan for what's going to happen when they go away um and so some of these things are tied directly to the pandemic those should sunset and go away um when the funding goes away for some example, of them can you tell me which which of the ftes would well, be related to COVID? the first like for instance the hr salary the hr staffing that COVID support, that type of, those type of, 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 of staff. Um, all, ultimately, all of these staff, we, when we've hired these folks and when we've, when we've allocated the staff out, people understand that, that there, there's not a, on a continuing funding source. So w there's a possibility that we may need to, to pull those, um, those, reduce those staff in, 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 in future years. But yes, there are some that are, that are tied uh, and that we would, they would naturally sunset. Um, the other thing um, is, is like you were, you had pointed out the HVAC. Those are we tried to, to the extent possible, use as much of these, uh, as much of these funds for one-time items as we as we could. So that's a good use where we can put it into HVAC modifications that uh, once we do those, we don't, you know, they don't cause any kind of funding cliff because there's not anyone who's going to lose their job or a service that's not going to get done. So we have that, those things should sunset um, easily. And we also did things like retention bonuses, those types of things uh, where, um, you know, uh, we're just trying to incent folks to stay with us and you know there's no promise that we'll give a, a, a retention bonus in a future year we're we're giving it now because we have dollars um but some of these some of these items are going to sunset some of them are going to be um reduced to align with um funding and needs and others are going to be eliminated um and and so you know it's going to be a combination of those three things um but the things that we like and are working well and uh, and we feel like should continue beyond the pandemic, beyond the funding, we are going to work to uh, uh, incorporate those into our ongoing general fund um, budget. But it's it, there's no doubt it is a concern and a challenge. You have these dollars 
um, we really do need to spend them. We can't we can't we can't give them. Right. I guess we could give them back, but no, no, no. Uh, nobody's yeah. asking to give them back. Yeah, exactly. So, but the challenge is, how do you spend them and then and then kind of have an off ramp? And we are thinking about that. and We are planning, but right now we're also making sure that we are spending them all as wisely as we can. But, but I think I'm. I'm can, can I yes. let uh, Mr. McMillian yes. jump in and then we'll come back if your questions haven't been yes. answered yet? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Sure. Thank you. Mr. McMillian? Yeah, thank you. Uh, am, am I right, Mr. Hartlover? Like right now, the kids in the virtual learning program are still assigned or connected or actually counted in the school numbers wherever they left? You are correct. OK, so it's kind of like Sollers kids. So Sollers Point kids that, you know, come from Kenwood and Chesapeake and all these other places, they're still in the Chesapeake number or the Kenwood number or whatever. Correct. Uh, they're not counted in. We're receiving a lot of letters and, and you know, f about this program and some even from kids. And and somebody pointed out, said if if you establish this, your own virtual learning school and take those kids away from from the, whatever school they used to attend and, and the traditional brick school and that you took them and you established a school on its own that then you could fund that school just like you would any other school. Is that is that reasonable? Does that make any kind of sense at all? It, there, there is this. I, I, I understand the that that point of view. The. I think some of it has to do with with scalability, with the size. You know, if you're taking, if you're taking, uh, if you have an elementary school with 500 students, and you're just taking, you know, five students from that elementary school, they in effect need to keep the same staffing that they have because five students is not going to really make a difference. But when you add those five students to all the other students at the virtual school, you need staffing for over there. So it. it now, if you lost, you know, 50 students from a school, maybe you could. Of course, they're going to be split between grades and so on. But, you know, there is a point where you can theoretically reduce staff. Um, but unfortunately, right now, the, the size of the program, you know, is not, it, it's difficult. It's challenging to kind of slice that staff out um, because it's difficult to take part partial staff. So, so I get the theory, and I think the theory can work, but at smaller numbers, it not it doesn't necessarily work as well because, like I said, my you know I think that my example is is the kind of the concern if you're taking small numbers of students from a large number of schools, um, probably can't reduce staff in any of those schools. You may be able to get one or two schools where you could reduce, you know, a teacher or two, but you're not going to have enough to run the full virtual program. OK, and and just a commentary comment like Miss Lichter used a couple of minutes ago. I was talking to somebody today in a high school that said eight or ten of their problem teenagers have been shifted over to virtual learning program, and they said it makes a noticeable difference in that school because they've they they're no longer attending that school every day in the building. OK, thank you very much. Miss Han, you had a follow up. I do. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Hartlove, along the lines of Mr. McMillian's question, um, we heard last week that staffing allocations did not decrease um, when virtual learning was started and we were held harmless because with the enrollment de decrease. So if general um, fund revenues did not decrease for instructional salaries and we received or we used ESSER funds for virtual um, learning instructional salaries, shouldn't there have been a surplus in the general fund balance that we could tap for continued virtual learning? Well, the 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 the, the surplus is one time in nature, um, but yes, we do. We have had some surplus because of the the number of vacancies that that we have. Even though we have, even though we haven't aligned our staffing to our enrollment. Um, we also haven't been able to hire all those teachers, so it's it's you know, so the vacancies have caused one time savings. Now, part of the way we're balancing the budget um, is by taking those vacant positions and and eliminating them there. Um, and 
and and using those savings to help us fund uh, raises and those types of things. So in the current year, you're correct, but you know, going forward, we won't have the dollars for a continuing program. Understood, but it's, I'm going to use the phrase double dipping and, and not in a pejorative se sense, but we we did receive funding for salaries in both for these students that were co-enrolled, we received funds, federal funds and state and local funds for those salaries, correct? Right, yeah, if you're saying, if you're getting back to like Mr. McMillian's point that, okay, so we created the virtual learning program yes. and we did not reduce uh, the staff. Um, yes, yes, that, that we do have, we do have that built in, you're, you're we correct. Did, correct, we did not reduce the staff. We didn't hire new staff. So we sh I'm I'm trying to see where why we can't continue this given the fact that we had funds for our, our existing staff in brick and mortar we reassigned them to to virtual so those offset one another plus we received ESSER funds to cover those salaries Well okay so, what so am there's I a missing? bunch of well, there's a bunch of stuff in there. So if you're just if if if, if we if we say uh, we're going to create a virtual program, um, the first the first issue is kind of where do you reduce the staff from? Because like I said, I, I think I think the number of students that are coming from schools, it's a small number, so it's very difficult to take uh, uh, fund, uh, take staff away from. Um, uh, an existing brick and mortar school when they're only going to lose a you know a handful of students maybe so so that's the challenge there is that we it's it's very difficult to reduce um uh the staffing to to create ongoing staffing for a virtual learning program now in this particular year we get we're getting federal dollars so it's not a problem because we we have the federal dollars to fund um, the virtual program and we have the brick and mortar program funded at the full enrollment and yes they're getting a little bit of a benefit because those handful of virtual kids are not there so it's it's a you know but not enough to reduce staff so our challenge going forward is is that the virtual the federal dollars go away and the only way we would be able to continue that using existing funding is by somehow reducing the staffing um, in the brick and mortar schools in such a way, you know, and, and it would, I think that'd be challenging. Can you clarify so something? Would, Sorry, Julie, do oh, you mind if I jump in real quick? It just, um, I just want to, I just need a clarification with um, the teachers that are doing the vert. So uh, the students that are, they're affiliated with the community school, whether it's, you know, Carroll Manor or Hereford Middle, whatever, th those teachers, those students that are from each of their community schools, are they in one class together by themselves with a teacher from that community school, an additional virtual learning teacher that is teaching just them? Does that make sense? Yes, and, and I, my understanding is all the virtual kids come together and then they have them by grade. I'm not sure exactly how they're split up, but I, I, I don't I don't totally understand the, the, the structure of the virtual program. Um, but the ch if I, I'm trying to come up with a good example, like if we had a school that had 500 students and if you figure just let's just use a round number that there's 20 kids in each class, that would mean mm -hmm. we'd have 25 teachers for those 500 kids. Now we 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 have a virtual program and five of those kids leave that school. I don't believe we can reduce any of those 25 teachers and those but those five students are going to need an instructor at the virtual program. Not just for them. I mean it's going to be for those five plus other students together, but still there's there's staffing there um, it, that we would have to we would have to um, add. I guess that's why I'm confused Mr. because. Oh, can I say, oh, Mr. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry Mr. Go ahead. I, I no, just go have ahead. one follow up and then I'll hand it back to you. Yep. Um, but there are economies of scale, right? So to Mr. McMillian's point, we could theoretically open enrollment and shift teachers accordingly. 
to break even more or less. And, you know, that would be complicated, but theoretically it would be possible to offset those costs and maintain the current staffing levels should we establish a virtual school. Is that? That, that is possible, yes. It's, possi it's it, Yes, I think. Yes, it's it's a possible. It, 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 it's certainly. Uh, I think it's just. Um, just like my example before, it, it does cause some problems as to where you take the staff from. But in theory, if you have, you know, whatever, 110,000 students, um, you should be able to, you know, if the staff is in, in a virtual program or the staff is in brick and mortar, you know, if you look at it, it in large numbers, it works. But when you start going down to classes in individual schools, um, the more you split them up into more classes and more schools, the more difficult it gets to staff. And there's an inefficiency in your staffing when you have small numbers of of of, of students, um, um, you know, occupying one teacher. Sure, because when faced with this situation, we could have gone either direction. We could have limited it, which is the proposal with the lottery, or we could have expanded it to um, address that need to um, fully, you know, make use of our staff and and optimize that for efficiency. Right. Safe. Right. And okay. I think you know, and I wasn't here at the at the you know when this was when this started, um, but you know it, the first part of this was you know in response to the pandemic. And I know now we you know we've learned a lot, and you know certainly pe there are people that like this program, um, but. You know, um, there is the efficiency aspect of it uh, that we have to look at because um, unless you're talking about reallocating staff, it does become uh, a cost because, you know, if you're not going to take it out of the brick and mortar school, then you have to add it. Right. And we have it without a long term plan for virtual learning, which was in response to an emergency situation. Um, it's hard to make those adjustments on the fly. Which we're trying to do, but we have the fund balance, our fund balance, which gives us some room to for planning. Um, but I'll turn it back over to Ms. Domanowski. Thank you, Ms. Lister. You said you had a clarification. Ms. Lister, are you there? Sorry. So the, the VLP, um, Maggie, did your question is set up. Um, as their own kind of school. So Carroll Manor is not just with Carroll Manor kids and Fort Garrison's not. They have like a first grade class, a second grade class. So they're all they're all mixed together. But the thing is, um, Mr. Hartlev, are schools still staffed in points? So as a principal, my staffing may say 26.3 for FTEs. Are they still staffed in points or have they been rounded? No, they're, I might believe they're still staffed in partial points. FTEs. Right, so if, I mean, and we were given, and I cannot find a document, we were given how many kids are coming from each virtual learning program. So I think we're looking for how could we take, instead of going from the current program down to 40, is there a way to increase the FTE so we allow more kids to stay? Because we didn't do a good job communicating at the beginning of the year that this was the, the last year. So since we're dealing in points anyway, I, I understand that we may be taking point one from a school, but that point one gets added to the point six from another school, which gets added to the point three from a school, and now we have one FTE. So we're already dealing in points when we get staffing out to our principals. So we could be gaining some of those points back because right now I'm getting a I'm getting staffed for that child who never enters my building and is totally in a virtual learning program. So I understand we might not take a full teacher from them, but if we added up all those points, would we be able to add maybe 20 extra FTEs to the 40 that they're proposing now? Has that been, I think that's this whole point, can we take them, and it might just be a little bit, but we're already functioning in staffing through less than a full FTE. Right, and I, you know, I, I what I would say to that is, is that I'm a numbers guy, so we. The, when it's, I, you can do a lot of things on a spreadsheet, and I know I'm, I'm sure we can do it on a spreadsheet. The question is, that would really be more of a, you know, for the uh, academic 
Yeah, well, I would say HR and also our instructional folks because you know how they uh, staff schools. Um, I don't want to over formula based. It's all yes. formula based on who is in your building. But right now we are giving them staffing based on kids who do not enter their building. Right, right, right. And but and I and I get your point and I think the math works, but the math sometimes like if I, I and I hate to repeat myself, but that like that example that I had, if we took a point, you know, we took five students away and we took a point one, that principal may say, well, what do I do? I know point one is not the end of the world, but it's like, OK, so what do I do now? I lost, uh, uh, you know, 10 percent of one of my teachers, but I have the, I got to run the exact same classes I did last year because whether but I that's have already happening. They're already given staffing and points and have to kind yeah. of figure it out. The problem yeah. is what you said. Principals don't and I get that. I was a principal. Right. You don't want to lose any of your staff. Right, right. But we are staffing them for kids that are not in their building. We're just trying to figure out because we didn't really tell parents way in advance. They've missed magnet timelines. They've missed private school timelines. We're trying to figure out this lottery is going to really be an angst for a lot of families. How can we beef up the numbers instead of going so drastic? And I know they're working on a proposal to show us for next week, so um, I'll stop. Thank you. My other follow up just to kind of go off what Ms. Litcher pointed out. So there were 210.4 FTEs in 2022 with a $10.7 million budget. And then it went from 164 to 12 million. And now I feel it and I, I and I know you're saying that it, that number could be wrong, but that's what we have to go off of. So if this isn't correct, where's the correct data? Right. The, I, I can say the dollars are correct. The, the FTE I would I think was our was what we had planned for. So but we can get you the actual the actual FTE. Because I think that would help as far as saying that there's we can only afford 40 at 6 million when we afforded 210 at 10 million and 164 at 12. I think to come back and tell um, you know virtual learning parents we can't do it because we can't afford more teachers and they're going to look at this and be like, well, we, we did it in 23 and, and 22. So right, that, that's right. going to be a problem. Right. Yeah, I mean, our bigger issue is the dollars and 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 um, but you know, there's certainly a discussion that that uh, you know. Well, it is the dollars, but it's also the you need the teachers, right? The FTEs, right. the people in there. Right. And when you're saying, and we need, then give us the actual FTEs that we had in 23 and 22. If it wasn't 210, if it wasn't 164, how many was it actually? Because that's all we have to go off of right now. And right. to to try to you know communicate that to our constituents, we can't afford this. But we, but it doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense to me. So, um, I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying you're not, the numbers are not are wrong. For as far as the money is concerned, I'm concerned about the actual FTEs yep. and and being because that's what that's what funds this program. That's what that's what they spend their money on is the teachers. So, um, if if we could get a better understanding of how many actual FTEs we had in 23 and 22, that would help. Got it. Got it. And I and I get and I get the confusion. So I I, I totally we will uh, we can get you those actual numbers. Anybody else have any other questions about this, or should we move along? I'm done. <laughs> and the other, the, um, so I will stop sharing this, and I will. Um, Can everyone see the? It, you should be looking at a document that says SR3 Amendment Number Two, October 2022. Yes. Good. Okay, so this is just this just kind of shows you um, um, the amendments that we've done um, so far, and we are working we're working on another amendment um, uh, based upon uh, some of the new information that we have. Um, but uh, the left column is basically kind of where we started, or actually it was after our, it was our first amendment. Um, and then there's a line down the center and there's the new amendment. New was back in October 2022. That was the last amendment we did for ESSER 3. 
so you can see i know the the, the big thing is the virtual learning program and even at the beginning um we had two years in um and those uh in those two years uh we didn't have a third year in so that's just showing you but that doesn't mean we can't change things that's just showing you what the plan was at, at the very at the very beginning um but I don't know that there's a lot of use to go through the entire document. It, it just basically, uh, unless you guys had have questions, unless board members have questions, um, um, I think we covered a lot in the first in the projections, but certainly can answer any questions related to to this document. Does anyone have any questions? Julie, did you want to read your chat um, out loud? I mean, Miss Hen, sorry. <laughs> oh, just to follow up on Ms. Lichter's request about clarification, and this provides some of the detail that I was looking for for um, virtual learning around the um, costs for that program. If we could get final numbers and um, FTEs. Yep. Thanks. Certainly appreciate all the, the questions that were good, good, good questions, and uh, we will get you the updated information that you've requested. And I, um, but I think that's what we have for this evening. I don't know if um, Ms. Dominowski, if you have anything else you. Uh... No, I was just giving some time in case, um, but if I don't, if there's no more questions, Mr. Hartlove, thank you so much for answering all of ours right now um, and for presenting this for us. It was a lot of information to go through. Um, it's very helpful and um, if follow up would be awesome. <laughs> Thanks. We'll get it. We got it and, uh, and uh, thank you. And okay. Mr. Hartlob, I'd like to say I appreciate the fact that you're a numbers guy. A system, <laughs> the system our size needs numbers, a whole department full of numbers people right. to understand be because of the, the just the size and the scope of this this budget. Thank you very much. And Mr. Tantliff, thank you guys very much. Yep, Mr. Tantliff's got my sure. back. He does a lot of good number crunching and he's a phenomenal uh, team team player. Well, thank you both very much. This this has been incredibly helpful. I second or third what every, everyone else and, has said. And I'm sorry to cut you off. I, and uh, uh, there's uh, uh, one other person who's done a lot of work on this. That's uh, uh, Jolene Wingard. She's uh, an accountant who who is on top of this, does a lot of work. So I really appreciate all her her hard work on this as well. Yes, thank you to her too. Thank you, Ms. Wingard. Yeah. Well, if there's thank nothing you, else. Everybody. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. If there's nothing else. The uh, the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next budget committee meeting will be scheduled for Wednesday, March 22nd at 5:30. Um, However, due to a scheduling conflict for board members, other possible dates are Thursday. Oh yeah, there, uh, there's a, um, uh, the state of Baltimore County Schools with um, Mr. With Dr. Williams is that evening. Um, we can discuss a, a possible different date. Um, I haven't quite gotten that wrapped around my head yet, but um, right now it'll be tentatively scheduled still for Wednesday, March 22nd, but I will communicate with all of you if we want to change that time. Uh, otherwise, if there's any other further business, hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thank you. You too. Thank Me you. Too. Thank, Thank you. you.